Hi everyone, let's get started now. We'll be talking about creating and theming amazing PDFs using Drupal 8. Thank you for coming. My name is Tahir. I work at Accelerant as a software engineer. Uh, we are a distributed team delivering digital solutions. You can find me on Twitter at DevTahir. So uh, let's first know what are PDFs. I think most of you here might be well aware of what it is, but still um, it helps. Um, it was invented by, uh, I mean it was created by Adobe primarily to standardize the text formatting, images, vector graphics, and it it is independent of OS which uh, it displays on. So that's one of the key thing uh, what PDF solves. Uh, it is hardware and application independent. Now let's see uh, how Drupal comes into picture. So Drupal has powerful capabilities with regards to creating structured content. It also has a good and robust editorial workflow. So if you are creating lots of documents online and you have lots of people involved, you can make use of editorial workflow, which is provided by Drupal 8. And Drupal 8, as you all know, is enterprise ready. What happens if we combine uh, the powerful capabilities of Drupal 8 and PDFs? There are lots of exciting possibilities which we will explore in a brief during the session. So the next question would be, how do you get started? The first part is find out why you require a PDF-based solution for your use case. So during this stage, you just need to answer a couple of questions. What is the use case? Like, for example, you can have a brochure, a product specification, a book, a test paper, etc. Does, does your use case require reusability? Like, are you going to create one type of document again and again? Like, do you have lots of documents which are of one particular type and you just need to build that again and again to save time? You can select Drupal 8 and the talk I'm about to give is about that. So we will uh, take a very basic example. I think you already have a Drupal booklet which was given to you. If you see, uh, we'll take this as a case study. Uh, we just need to generate an event book and it can be repl replicated at more events coming forward. Is it reusable? Yes. Is it, does it save time? Yes. So uh, I want everyone here to look at the screen and try to um, understand just the layout of this page. It's page number 10 and page number 11 in your book. Um, try to find uh, what you can reuse. What, are, what, what does this page look like? So uh, as we see uh, on the top, there is a title in the header, on-site resources. In the footer, we have the page number, we have uh, the Wi-Fi password, and Drupal on Amsterdam written here, right? So that's the header and the footer of the document. It will be re remaining the same throughout the document. The next thing is, it has a brief description on the top. Then it has a lot of cards which has an icon, a title, and a description, which is just repeated, reused again and again. So yeah, um, to summarize, 
what we can do is identify the field structure of the PDF you are about to create, style the PDF, layout of the PDF. What is the layout here? We have a header, we have a footer, we have a two column layout, and we have cards. Styling the PDF fields, we have fonts, font sizes for each and every element, colors, pagination. Um, pagination is an important part when you are working with PDFs. Character limits for PDF fields. So, um, for example, on the header, we have a big font. So, while designing, the designer should take care of the character limits of each and every field. For example, uh, the title, the description, we can limit it to around 500 words or something like that. The image dimensions, right? Here is just a 50 by 50 or 100 by 100 image. So you need to specify that, that what kind of images will be accepted while entering the content. So yeah, that's the brief about designing the PDF before we jump into Drupal things. Next one, setting up Drupal 8 backend. So as we create content, we set up a basic content type for this. It's called structured PDF. It has a page title, it has a page description, and it has a resource card. Simple enough. Resource card is an entity reference field. Okay, going forward, we'll take one example. Uh, we will limit the maximum length to 50 characters for the page title, right? And you can have multiple li limits on all of your fields, or it's not really necessary, but I would recommend you have um, limited amount of characters at specific fields so that your output will be more predictable. Next thing, uh, there is this module called Entity Print written by Benji. It's a very well architected and a good module which has lots of flexibility uh, for our use case. You just um, install the module using Composer, enable the module, Next thing, we need to configure the module. So if you go to admin config content slash entity print, you will get this page where you can have these options. So there are multiple PDF generators which entity print supports. It is recommended to use DOM PDF because it actually mimics the HTML you write, the HTML and CSS you write as it is, and it's beginner friendly and it has lots of customizability. So um, we will be using DOM PDF in this example. There are other uh, PDF generators supported as well, like MPDF, WKHTML. You can find more about it in the entity print docs on Drupal.org. Then the next thing is you can select uh, the paper size. Now paper size is not just fixed. We can actually extend the entity print module exactly to, to actually have the paper size which we require. So uh, entity print is very extensible in that way. It's very flexible. You can define your own paper sizes there. And also you, you can support multiple engine, uh, PDF generator engines as well. So MPDF by default is not supported by entity print, but if your use case requires more PHP uh, oriented support and not more of HTML and CSS, you can use MPDF. It provides lots of flexibility as well. It has its own limitations, but um, yeah, that's what you can do. You can extend the module to use your own PDF generator, and these are the other options. Um, it, it can force you to download whenever, whenever you click view to PDF, view PDF. We'll see that uh, in the coming slides. 
The next thing is um, you have configured your um, module now in your manage display for your content type. You will have an option called view PDF. You just need to drag it from the disabled section to the enabled section and you will get a view PDF link on your node view of that particular content type. So let's summarize what we did. Uh, we did set up the fields. We installed the entity print country module. We configured entity print. Then we displayed the view PDF link on the node. And optionally here, what uh, site builders and backend developers can do is configure your content type with workflow for the PDF content type so that it's more towards publishing. Uh, and if you have custom workflows to create these content, you can do that right now. Okay, the next step, setting up the Drupal front end. So um, there is um, entity print. What it does is it takes your node template and it generates the PDF for you using the engine which you selected, right? So um, there is nothing very PDF specific you need to write. You just need to um, modify your node template. Uh, here, for example, you can just add structured PDF um, HTML .tweak file, and you're all set. You just need to print the fields here. Now is the fun part, Add, adding custom CSS library to the entity print. By default, entity print gives a basic support for most of the HTML elements, but uh, if you are working on a complicated or a complex um, PDF solution, you would want your own styles and your own library. So um, and, uh, you just need to clone the entity print node content, um, the entity print dash dash node. This is the template uh, in entity print module, which you need to, you can override it very content specific, right? So uh, for node dot structured underscore PDF, uh, you just copy paste the content of that file into this file. Make sure you have entity underscore print underscore CSS and the content variable printed here. Otherwise, it won't work. The next thing, you need to override the library used by entity print. So if you just want a CSS library to be included in your structured PDF content type, you just have entity underscore print, node and structured PDF and give the library name. Here we have the library name as structured PDF. And if you want for all content type, like uh, if you have multiple content types which are generating PDFs for you, you can have a basic style included for all of them using the all keyword. This you need to do in your test.info.yaml file. Next thing is uh, you actually define a library in the libraries.yml file. Here you have two files. One is for the layout and one is for the actual theme. Let's summarize what with it. We created a custom node tab tweak template. We added custom CSS library to the entity print. We overwrote, we overwrote the library used by entity print. And we defined a custom CSS library in our theme file, theme libra libraries file. Okay, so now we just need to take care of some PDF con uh, considerations while you are working. First one is pagination. So if you have, uh, for example, this page uh, is just page number 10 and 11. So you need to have um, uh, customized pagination for each and every page. You need to have a variable which informs uh, which you can print on the node template. You need to see how much images support your PDF generator gives you. 
DOM PDF has quite good support for PNG SVG files. MPDF has uh, very wonky support for images, so you might want to take care of that. CSS support in various PDF generators, that is important while you are selecting your PDF generators. See, look for um, the library which is having more of CSS3 and CSS2.0 support. Um, you can read more about DOM PDF on dompdf.github.io and MPDF is basically uh, more like a PHP based where you can control the styling using PHP. So make sure you check that out as well. Moving forward, like what are the kinds of solution we can build using this? I just want to spark uh, some imagination from the crowd here. Um, for universities, we can have brochures like which are like very constant. Like for various departments, the brochures look the same. You just have to um, change the content in that. Course catalogs, test examination papers. They all have like a basic template which you can develop using Drupal. Books, books are a bit complicated, but we have done uh, books in one of the use cases which we did for a client. Uh, for enterprise, we have product catalogs, specification sheets, technical documentations. Anyone from the crowd wants to add to this, what can we create? Uh, reports. Reports, yes. Badges. Badges, wow, nice. Certificates. Certificates. Keep them coming. Schedules for DrupalCon. Schedule for DrupalCon, correct. So, yeah, so the possibilities are endless. Uh, we did a um, couple of uh, solutions for a uh, Fortune 30 company, and um, they have like thousands and thousands of uh, products which they want specifications for, and uh, it was uh, a really hit product in their tooling. So I, I would like to um, thank every one of you for being here. Um, if you have any questions, please. You can catch me on Twitter at Dev, Dev Tahir, and uh, please give feedback for my session on the events app. Thank you. I, I, I would like to catch up with anyone of, uh, of you who have uh, any questions later. See you all. Thank you.